know how to feel about this specific scandal because I was so small in 06. I was what entering high school. I cared only about my clubs. Um, but this thing made news, right? Calcio Poli. And, and is that the, Andre, is that the way to say it? Or Alina, is that the way to say it? Yeah, I think I think that's the way to say it, Calcio. Yeah. Yeah, just the most in my time, short time as a fan to that point, the most corrupt scandal I think I'd ever seen yeah. in football. I mean, Alina, you're a Juve fan. I don't know if if, if you've seen anything bigger than this. Mm. No, I haven't. <laughs> and it I, it I honestly, if I was a U of A fan, then I was like ten or eleven in in two thousand six. So I just I mostly followed like World Cup football, like national team football and stuff like that. I wasn't mm -hmm. too immersed in in club football. Like I know, you know, like Milan were doing really well in in those times, and uh, Liverpool, like kind of like back to back. It would either be like Milan or Liverpool, and then you know you had like the Barca and Madrid teams kind of coming up, um, and then just killing it into, in the early two thousand. 2010s but oh man i looking looking back at that and obviously what we've 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 gotten yesterday i i can't help but get flashbacks and be concerned because i think some uva fans are like literally celebrating they're like yes mm -hmm. any yelly out like we're not gonna get like terrorist football anymore like allegri is next <laughs> we're not gonna like spend money on like players like ronaldo for example where you just like throw more money for the brand and some fans i think some fans have a lot of like pent-up hatred towards Anielli because some of the things he did over like the past 10 yeah. years or so like he changed the, the you know the, the club logo um he went with players like i said like that are more like a, a statement as opposed to yeah. talents or focusing focusing on the youth so some people are like literally celebrating um him that, being that's out. making sense to me though like people it are legit getting fired Right, right, and or sorry, and, no, they're resigning. Right, they didn't get fired. Yeah, they resigned. They, they're yeah, like they resigned. stepping away. Yeah, yeah, Which they resigned. History tells us some shady shit's probably going on. 100%. Yeah. If everybody leaves. If if one or two people leave, it's one thing. But when the whole entire board and the vice president leave, come on, man! Mm -hmm. Like everyone, everyone yeah. involved left. It's and crazy. did this happen last time? Like like in, in 06, before everything came out, before the match fixing with the refs, before. Mm -hmm. The five teams that were involved, like, I don't know. That's did, a good question. I don't know if did this happen? Did they, did, did they see what was happening? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here, and yeah. the board of directors just dip out. I don't know because, like, before arrests happen in any major scandal, whether it's sports specific or not, you see that. Like, yeah. all right, I'm just gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. People get the, the hell door. out of here. Yeah. I think of like the, yeah, bro. You think of like the Barca scandal not, not too long ago? It's not anywhere near compared to the, I think what's going on in Italy. But um, you know, the former president, you know signing people to crazy fucking contracts mm -hmm. you know, spending money he just didn't have um and then it comes out that like you know we have all these financial fair play issues because we were just you know putting contracts out there the acquisition of neymar was a big thing i i don't you don't see this too often in yeah. football which is why I'm, i want to pay attention to it and why i want alina's take on it it's just yeah i don't know if we should be getting excited like some of the fans are if we should be worried if if we're going to come back from the World Cup and like you just hearing about a storm of the castle with in Turin and they're just arresting people, fuck, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the, I don't know how to the take only it. thing, the only, I mean, I don't even know if this is a positive thing, but it's just like something to keep in mind is in 2006, a lot of what happened with those teams was like match fixing and paying graphs and like you know playing around with match results. Whereas now, what they're struggling with is mostly like those account like you know accounting and financial statements and stuff like they just like they don't add up like it's clearly yeah. that someone in the board i don't know who it was obviously we don't know yet but or not cooking even someone books? some people yeah they're cooking the books um you know, there was there were talks of like for example in the covid era where a lot of teams stopped playing their uh stopped paying their players or they gave them like mm -hmm lesser contracts and apparently oh, the U of A board said that they stopped paying but like on the you know on the on the low low they kept paying them the regular <laughs> so they kind of like worked around the, the the Italian government laws we'll see how this shit pans out I don't want to steer yeah. away from the the agenda we have today for the World Cup too much but it, it is easily the biggest news if you pay attention to, to the sports as a whole and how impactful it is for 
front offices like this to just completely dip, like fucking exit, not not look back. Something fishy is going on there. And I think we're going to have more. I don't know if the CEO is going to make an announcement. I think they, I think Fabricio said that that was the case. Like they're going to be some kind of announcement made maybe yeah. after the World Cup leading up to the, into January. Mm -hmm. But imagine though, imagine like the only moves that Juve gets made, Alina, are just temporary front office moves. But because of what's going on, they can't buy any players. They can't, you know, they can't make any crazy transitions. Um and that's that's crazy. Like, just imagine if we get like a transfer ban, which honestly is not one of the worst things that could happen. That's probably like the best case scenario if we get a transfer ban. <laughs> but if we get a transfer ban for like three years, two to three years, and we freaking get stuck with Sandro and Quadrado <laughs> as our fullback, fullbacks, mm. no. But you get amazing. Bremen. Yeah, sure. but he's a center back though. I mean, fair, but like you know, the guy's a rock. Unless he, he decides lost. to leave and yeah. get out of Dodge too. You lost uh, Delict. So it's good. Yeah, that that guy Back is up, getting benched um, in the World Cup, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not, not too worried. Yeah, about what it. happened to him? He had like when he came out of Ajax, he was just like the next big thing, and now he doesn't even start anywhere. MLS or what? Hey, <laughs> I, I, I think he was overrated the whole time. <laughs> I think I he was. I think he was in I the think he had a really system. good season. I think he was in the perfect system, yeah. exactly. And that year that they made it all the way to pretty much the Champions League final, they should have made it, except for Lucas Mora's hat trick. But that's the year that they just dismantled that IX team. And I think everybody shined in their little spots, right? Like that's when even yeah. like Donny Van de Beek was like one of the best midfielders in the world. I'm like, I don't see it, but okay. So I will take the leaked on a discount at Barca. Yeah, that would be good for you guys, actually. That would pretty yeah, I would easily you take the on a discount. Max? Max? 30, 30. Yeah, how much would you pay for him? Yeah, I was going to say like 40 million 30. tops, probably. 35, 40. 40. 40. I, I would say what we, pay, what we paid for Leva is like what I would well, pay for Delict is like. And the thing is, the issue million, with, that, it was. with center backs now is that Maguire inflated all the prices because he was 100 million and he's obviously not fucking great. So now when you yeah. have a guy like him being 100 million, then you're like, oh, Delict should be like at least 50. I'm like, no, let's pump the brakes here for a second. Maguire should be 50. <laughs> and then delete. Well, even from like a business standpoint, 30. I mean, even from a business standpoint, <clears throat> Bayern wants to cover their ass in fees, right? Yeah. So, like, they they spent what eighty million to yeah. get him from Juve or seventy million, some shit, something like that. So yeah. they're yeah. they're not going to let him go for less than sixty. Yeah, um, especially because he's still just, young. It be a good investment. Right. Yeah, he at a minimum they will keep him for depth like that. that yeah. they're not going to sell him for a loss. And so, mm. um, you know, I, I think market value is important, but. Um, I, I don't know. I, I still think as much as he fucks up, whether it's for Juve or for uh, Bayern, I'm sorry, or for the Netherlands, I think that he's still like a decent center back. And like Andre said, in the right system. Yep. You just never know. And to me, Barca and Ajax's systems at, down to the academy level are pretty similar. Yep. Um, you know, built around possession and not not being in a position to get beat the way he does against, you know, like with Bayern, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But perfect segue, I guess, um, into our agenda for today. Uh, box to Box, episode 17. Uh, I know we've been rambling a little bit, guys. Uh, I do love this new format, though. So if you guys have tuned in episode over episode, we really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't, and this is your first time here, um, hopefully the first 10 minutes of the show did not deter you from what's coming next. Uh, episode 17 brought to you by Goals.TV. Uh, Goals TV is live today. You can check out tons of free-to-consume footy content unlimited as much as you want go check it out there's hours of content available for you right now everything from u.s men's national team to podcasts vlogs world cup all there again goals.tv um and with the episode 17 for today we are sticking in line with the world cup despite what this first 10 minutes of the show has been like we are sticking with the world cup um but not really reporting on how we feel about some of the results um i love how episode 16 felt in terms of bringing back the nostalgia of the world cup the emotions that the tournament elicits from us uh, and some of our favorite moments. We talked a lot about controversy controversies and those kind of moments that you never thought would, would happen in previous world cups. Um, we've seen a lot. We've had a ton of upsets already in the 2022 world cup. Um, and I kind of want to stick on that theme for today, guys. I want to focus a lot on the upsets that we've seen and maybe how that translates to some of the upsets that we've seen over the last decades when it comes to this tournament, mm -hmm. things that we thought we'd never see, right? Look at, we'll talk about it again here in a little bit, right? But, but look at Belgium, for example, in this world cup and how they're performing, look at Uruguay and how they're performing and how 
some of us called them to be the dark horses for this tournament. Hmm. Um, well, we'll jump into it. But as always, I am joined by my two esteemed co-hosts, Alina, a.k.a. GGSK, a.k.a. the Juve fan, who has a lot to think <laughs> about in the next coming weeks. Oh, 13. God. <laughs> um, and we have Andre Gutierrez, uh, a.k.a. Urban Dre, um, love and life right now as a Real Madrid fan. And, of course, m- maybe not so much as L3 fan, mm. a lot to be had in that final group stage game. But we will get into it. Um, so, talking about upsets, there have been a lot in this mm. World Cup already. Um, just name a few. We'll go through them one by one. I think the first one that we can kind of kick things off with, we haven't talked about recent results yet as part of the tournament being live. The first one is kind of a layup, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it is a giant result. Saudi Arabia shocking Argentina 2-1. Um, this took place in the opening days of the World Cup. Um, this was a match that Argentina, that many were picking Argentina to, to come out and just destroy him. hit the ground <laughs> running. Three, yeah. four, five goals. Messi's maybe first hit his first hat trick. Um, and granted, they had a lot of those opportunities in the first half, right? They, I, I don't know how many fucking offsides they had. I, I, it must have been like in the double digits. In all honesty, like they were called offside so much against Saudi Arabia. Nonetheless, lost 2 1. Is this the biggest upset we've seen at a World Cup this decade, Andre? Biggest? Is, is it the biggest World Cup e- defeat ever? So, yeah, I was talking to my dad about this actually. I think so because, I mean, you can look at like hard numbers, right? Like you can look at stats and how many times Saudi Arabia actually attacked two times and they scored two goals. Um, Ar- obviously Argentina dominated. They got those three goal, three goals called offsides uh, because of VAR. That one Lautaro one was very close. It was like the tip of his shoulder. Um, so that, that the game could have gone a different way. And the other thing too is uh, FIFA rankings, right? Argentina being the top three yeah. and Saudi Arabia being like what 50. I don't even know what they are. Um, I think they were right, right below forty. But yeah, either way, massive. Just the massive the gap, the, the the discrepancy was massive. Um, the other one that I was thinking about is Mexico Germany from four years ago, but that's that's more because Germany were the holders, and I think you know they had all this expectation of like the same core. You know, four years later, how are they going to perform? Um, obviously, nobody was giving Mexico a shot, maybe not even to tie. So those two are the ones that come to mind. But, dude, in recent history, absolutely. Like, waking yeah. up to that score. I, I didn't even watch the game, to be completely honest with you. And, I, and I'm always like, oh, I, I'm going to watch almost every game, if not every game. I was like, oh, it's going to be a walk in the park. I'm going to wake up to, like, a 4-0, 5-0. And sure enough, 2-1. to one. So it, it just, you know, threw that group into a loop. And now I'm stressed the fuck out because Mexico needs to <laughs> beat Saudi Arabia 3-0. So that's yeah. a different story. <laughs> but yeah, yeah man, I think so. It's fucking wild. Yeah. I, so... And you mentioned, you know, comparing it, right, to to, to some mm-hmm. of the previous, um, you know, upsets. You mentioned Mexico-Germany. I think, and you were there, right? So yep. that's one thing that most people, I think our viewers don't know. If you, if you don't know Andre personally, you know, he was at that World Cup. He was at that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I, I, I'm like, really quickly, bro, talk about just yeah. the feel of it. I think the fact that, it, again, it wasn't like an upset in the sense that, oh, Mexico was ranked 50, yeah. 60 plus, And, like, Germany was the holder and they beat them. But... It's a game that because they were the holders, because the previous year, for those who remember, the, the 2017 Confederations Cup, uh, Germany sent their B team mm-hmm. into that tournament, right? So all the regional winners came together to, to try out uh, the fields and, and yep. whatnot in Russia to get a, a sense mini of the World stadiums, Cup. To kind of build yeah. some hype for the – yeah, mini World Cup. And Germany sent their fucking B team. Yeah. They sent their U23 team, a team <laughs> that you would normally send to the Olympics, yeah. um, and to go compete with these senior rosters, and they won it. They won with their youngest talent, not mm-hmm. their senior players. So you expect Germany to come out swinging in 2018 in the opening group stage game. And Tricky Lozano has shit to say otherwise. So, you know, when you compare results like that, um, it's pretty easy to see how Mexico, Mexico fans could feel like this is yeah. probably one of the biggest upsets, um, you know, in, in their nation's history. Mm-hmm. Um, but thinking about some other ones, I mean, is is that result not bigger? I feel like this, res- I feel like this result is a little bit bigger than that Germany Mexico game. Yeah. But think about like 2010, right? Think about 2010. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Spain ended yeah. up, of course, winning that world cup, but they lose the, lose the first game. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. I, remember that. I, I remember watching that. There were so many Barca and Real Madrid players. Of course, that's, that's who I was actively cheering for at the time as well. Yeah. And thinking, how is a team this good? This, and, and at the time, 2010, like like Real Madrid and, and, and Barcelona were at their height, like their peak powers. Yeah. Uh, they had just so won the roster. They had just won the Euro, too, in 2008 against Germany. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so there was so much going for this team. 
Mm. Is that not a uh, if you had to pick Ooh. one, Helena, between Saudi Arabia, Argentina in twenty twenty two, or yeah. the team who would go on to win the World Cup that year, losing the opener to a team like Switzerland, who doesn't have the weapons they have now. You know, yeah. they were very much a younger team back. They then. were pedestrian back then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a for up, me, a, a bigger upset. I don't know. I think for me, like I like to look at it based on what happens afterwards. So, like for the Switzerland Spain result, like looking back at it, it was a shocker of you know of, of a first game for Spain. But at the same mm-hmm. time, they won the World Cup. So honestly, I feel like it was important in in terms of it helped the Spanish players wake up and realize this is probably going to be one of their like few chances to win a World Cup with such a golden golden age and you know as you guys said like the Barcelona and Madrid players doing really well and then um winning the Euros in th- 2008 as well so that was that was their chance to, to win that because you know we we saw what happened at the at the next World Cup um with Spain in 2000 yeah. in 2014 but um oh, I which think <laughs> I think like for example the the, the Mexico Germany that it that game decided the course of that world cup like germany were knocked out mm-hmm. uh, right they got knocked out of the yeah, they were they didn't go differential mexico got in yep. yeah they didn't go through so that was like you know that that world cup curse where if you win it before you're you know knocked out but the curse was it wasn't a curse it was just mexico outplaying the crap out of germany and that's why it happened um but i i think for me like if we're looking at the three like saudi arabia versus argentina um, Switzerland, Spain, or Mexico, Germany. Um, I would really like to see the Saudi Arabia versus Argentina to be like, if we look back at it, it's going to be the most shocking because then yeah. maybe we can get like Mexico and Saudi Arabia going through somehow. I don't know if that's possible, but I think Argentina <laughs> yeah. being knocked out of the World Cup would be the the most yeah. hilarious thing that's happened. And that is a really good point. That so it's it's funny. I'll, I'll just bring it to Mexico real quick, but. Obviously, losing to Argentina, mm-hmm. not great. 2-0, we at least needed a tie. Still have some life and some hope for tomorrow, but we'll talk mm-hmm. about it later. Um, what's funny is that people are starting to say, imagine if Poland beats Argentina 1-0, right? Or like a 2-1, to very close game, last minute, had it a could happen. Lewandowski, whatever. Yeah. It could happen. So if they do, and then Saudi Arabia beats Mexico, then Poland and, and Saudi Arabia go through and Argentina doesn't. So <laughs> that's what people are starting to say. Like if it's, if it's tied, even if it's a tight game, like Poland would go through because of, um, you know, they have four points now. So people are saying if it's zero, if both games are zero, zero being played at the same time, should Mexico just score an own goal and mm. say, fuck it, we're not going to go through. But then Argentina doesn't either. <laughs> people are starting to oh talk about it. Well, imagine a, imagine a world where Saudi Arabia, that's what I'm saying. Saudi Arabia wins. If Saudi Arabia and Poland go through out of that I know, group. I know. Imagine who, who my whole it? world will be shattered. No, who, I don't think nobody would have. Yeah, and and that's why, like you know, I asked Alina that question because for me, that that's that's how impactful that Saudi Arabia Argentina game was. Yeah. Now, and on the positive note, could this be a recreation of what we saw in 2010 with Spain? Right. Yeah. Where they lose their first game and then they just go on and lose win their it first off. game. Oh no! They, I hope not. Rumor, <laughs> <laughs> you hear rumors. You hear rumors about that Spain roster, right? Which they, they uh, Casillas and Xavi had to like bring the, the two, the Real Madrid yeah. captain and the Barcelona captain had to bring the team together, have a come to Jesus meeting and say, yep. look, if we don't stop fighting with each other, we're yep. not going to do anything in this World Cup and it'll be wasted. Yep. So um, I think that that Switzerland game was a wake up call and yeah. rightfully so. They, they go on to, to, to then win out the, the, the group from there and then win the tournament. Yeah. So what, you know. Yeah, no, that's a good point. You, it, it's almost like a, like a turning point or a pivotal point, especially because they had that 36, 37 game unbeaten streak since, uh, you know, yeah. 2000, I think 2020, right? July, 2020 when they lost to Brazil. So, you know, for them, it's like, okay, at least we got that monkey off our back. We, yeah, we lost yep. to Saudi Arabia. Fuck it, but let's get it out of the way. And then, you know, go all the way. So I could see that Ex- happening too, but yeah, hundred percent. Poland so- will have something to say tomorrow. We'll see. <clears throat> they will. They will. I, I'm not saying I, I dude, I seen Leva's, tears when he scored yeah oh man just heartwarming the the guy nobody wants to be a trivia game response right nobody wants to be oh who's the greatest player to 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 go to a world cup and never score never score nobody wants to be that nobody wants to be that guy like now leva can say he's not that guy but you know the 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 saudi arabia argentina match is interesting because the world was freaking out and i i was almost calm in the sense that they have the two more games, two more games that are critical. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think that this this team is so 
seasoned. There's so many veterans on that squad. I expect them to do what it takes to get through the group. And who knows, maybe even getting second place is, I don't know, uh, a blessing in disguise, right? We'll maybe see. just depending on who they end up facing in the next, in the next round. I mean, but that, that is, game, that's a really good point. Like you, you do get friends though, like as in the, for the second round of 16. And, and you and I watched the game together four years ago. That was a banger of a game. Game of the tournament by far. By far. Game yeah. of the tournament. Yeah. So, uh, so we will see what happens. Uh, but I, th- that, that to me was the first, obviously the big shocker, the big uh, upset. And I always like comparing what happens in, in cur- with current events to what's what we've seen in the past. On that same note, the next big shocker of this tournament so far um, has been the Japan Germany game. Which, yep. before we get into this, I think the now has passed. Andre could talk about it more. He had a little more on the line that day than we did. I did. Uh, <laughs> at least I, I didn't. I didn't gamble on the game. He did. Um, bro, tell, like, walk me through your your process for that day, starting with what you were betting on the night before. Yeah. So I'll I'll talk about it now because I had it in kind of my back pocket, and after all the the scores from that day, you know, or the, all the games were done, I finally was able. You to, didn't text me at all that. Morning, I didn't text. I didn't tell you, anyone. You normally, dude. you normally text me. I yeah. know. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I was like, oh, like I, I'm always like, I'm excited about this game, or what do you think about the game before? I wasn't talking to anybody, dude. And you know how hard that is for me. I have like fucking WhatsApp group chats with my cousins in Mexico and my friends here, and just everybody talking about the games and what are your predictions? And I was like, I'm not gonna say a fucking word. So anyway, I go, I go to bed the night before thinking tomorrow's going to be a big upset, upset day. And I put money, I put a $15 wager on Croatia, Morocco ending in a tie. Then Japan beating Germany. Hold on, hold on. This is a parlay bet, right? So you yes, had all so it's a parlay. On each other? Okay. All three things have to hit, right? Um, for, there were four matches that day. And I had Croatia, Morocco tying. It was the first game in the morning. Then the next one was Japan, Germany. I had Japan beating Germany. I just had a fucking feeling. Then uh, Spain over Costa Rica, which that one I put, I didn't put money on because I knew they were going to win. So I was like, fuck it. Like, that's a wash. And the last one was Canada over, over Belgium. All right. So I wake up in the morning. I'm watching Croatia, uh, you know, play a really lackluster game. And I'm like, honestly, I think it's going to happen. Sure enough, I get the tie. So I'm feeling good. This is like eight in the morning, Eastern time, you know, whatever. Going into the Japan game, Germany's all over them, right? So it's 1-0 with the penalty kick. I'm like, this is fucking done. Like, there goes my $15, whatever. It is what it is. Sure enough, Japan come back. I'm literally typing typing up emails, not even paying attention to TV. Two goals back-to-back within like five minutes. I'm losing my shit, right? So Japan's <laughs> winning. At this point, I look at the bet, and it, the basically the, the one thing that I forgot to mention, it was $15 wager to win $2,000, all right? So if all three results hit, it would have been a 2K winning. So it's, you know, I hit on the first two games. I think Japan Germany was probably the, the biggest shocker out of those three scores, and so I'm losing my shit. I would have I'm freaked like, out. I'm well at that point. I'm like, do I hedge it? Do I cash out? Because the cash out was like 500 bucks at that point. If I took my money and I didn't play the last game or I didn't, you know, go through with it for Canada Belgium, I would have won 500 bucks. So I'm thinking, yeah, but how many fucking times do I get to say that I was this fucking close, right? So I'm like talking to my dad about it. I couldn't talk to anybody else. He's like, you should do it. You should do it. I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. So I go through with it. First 20 minutes, Alfonso Davies penalty kick. I'm, I took my shirt off. I was like, oh, holy man. shit. I'm in the living room oh, being man. like, Davies is going to win me $2,000. This is going to be fucking great. He misses the penalty kick. Oh, From there, man. you should have seen it was a roller coaster of emotions dude, because I was checking back and forth. Like, how much would I win if I cash out? Do I, do I stay? Bro, it was they, fucking. They could have they had more PKs. They, I know. They, honestly, they, that, that second yeah. they were more opportunities. Should have been. So, so at yeah. halftime, I'm thinking if I cash out, it's 150 bucks. But I still felt like Canada could keep going, even though that Batsuaji goal happened and it was kind of like against run of play. So I just stuck with it yeah. until like the 75th or 80th, and I looked at it; it was like 45 bucks. So I tripled my investment from a 15 dollar wager. I got 45 bucks back, but I was this close from a 2,000 dollar paycheck. So anyway, that's my roller coaster. I, I love emotions. that man. Yeah. So I might, I might do the same thing. With one of these uh, Dude, these final group stage days, um, parlays we'll see, are the best. We'll see how it all pans out. Parlays yeah. are the best because you you don't even have to put that much money down, but the upside of winning it all could be fucking awesome. That is a roller that's coaster of emotions, starts, I know, I know. Trust me, <laughs> yeah. that's why I started with fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Don't tell yeah, me. You guys are gonna tell that's me fair. what that, that <laughs> website is. So I, I'll I'll put. Does it have to be a fifteen or can it be less? Can it be? No, you can put a dollar now. The, the minimum bet is a dollar bucks. Oh really? Or a, a, it's one dollar. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. You don't have a minimum bet um, amount, but it's easy. It's it's an app. I'm not gonna say the name unless you guys want me to. Yeah, but I can just yeah, text just you. Later. No, sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's that, that's free advertising. We'll save that for uh, later. But I, I will say, um, I think that you, you know. Hey, man, it would be fun doing a parlay. Parlays are fun because if you even yeah. get like the first one or two, I know. Right, then you're, you're you're on for the ride. You're <laughs> yeah. on for the ride. Like yeah. you're there. Yeah. So um, yeah. I think that that's 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 a lot of fun. Um, I um I also put I put another one stuff. down. I put another one down for I think it was the second group match for that same group, and I had mm-hmm. Belgium or I had uh, Croatia losing to Canada, and obviously that didn't happen. So that screwed everything up. Yeah. But, um, dude, no, it's they, fun. They actually wax Canada. I know. Which, I, honestly, kind of disappointed. We don't have to go on that tangent, but I had Canada going through in the group. They played well. Yeah. They, just, they should have beat Belgium. Yeah, that's, they did. That's really what it came down to. Or at least tie them. Losing 1-0 to Belgium yeah. was fucking shitty. So The dagger. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But but you mentioned, right? Like, that's that's what this tournament provides in yeah. terms of, like, you know, the, the emotions attached to these major upsets and results. Yeah. Um, but going back to Japan shocking Germany – um to is that let me ask you is that a bigger upset than saudi arabia argentina remove fifa rankings for a second okay mm-hmm. like that's what everybody equates it to yeah, I, yeah. I think we, we all all three of us know ball enough to where that's that's it comes down more to the eye test and maybe it's like i don't know if you remove messi from the equation maybe it's not quite as big of an upset i don't know but is japan beating germany not just beating them on a bullshit penalty that, that was called or like whatever but just flat out in the second half, beating them and scoring two very deserved goals. Is that a bigger result for the group than Saudi Arabia versus Argentina? I don't think so. I still think the Saudi Arabia thing is more insane. I think Japan has enough. And I think we, we, we talked about this before the World Cup. I, I've, I have Japan going through in that group. I have Japan and Spain going through. Because yeah. the Japanese team that played against the U.S. in one of the last friendlies that the U.S. played, beat them 2-0. Walked mm-hmm. all over the field. Could have been three zero. Could have been four zero. Like that could showed me four. a lot. Like, yeah, it was bad. That showed me a lot. Like those teams are dangerous, bro. Like Korea, Japan. Those teams are. You know, they play compact. Here's a fun fact, though. The two goals that were scored against Germany, both players played in the Bundesliga. So that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, with, yeah. With yeah. how people are talking about, oh, what do we know about the Japanese? I'm like, dude, if you actually pay attention, their starting eleven, <laughs> their full starting eleven, plays in Europe. So. You can argue it, Germany was, you know, the creator of their own demise, right? That's like what I'm they, saying. They, 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 yeah, their their home, their domestic league crafted this upset. Yeah, that's I. I literally said that right when they scored. I was like, that guy plays in the Bundesliga. Second guy, Bundesliga, easy done. They yeah, were even talking yeah. back in. They were speaking German back and forth. Like the Japanese players were speaking German. Ah, uh, like dead. Imagine, I know. imagine getting shit on and then like them then talking in your own language. In your language, like like, like, like <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like the fuck, dude. It was crazy. When I saw this result, it reminds me of um, when's the last time a major Asian country upset a major European contender? I want to uh, say like O2. Mm-hmm. Well, when Korea made it all the way to the semis, I think, right? Because they beat yeah, Spain. Yeah, Italy, that's a good right? One. Italy, they beat Spain and Italy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, they're so fucking solid. Would, the, would that that's a bigger deal though than this yeah. one? Right? I would. Like I that. would think so. Yeah. yeah. For sure, I would think so. Especially like being at home, like back then, people were like, "It's it's like Qatar, like going all the way to the semis if they did it this year." You know, like they, yeah, Korea just didn't have any like a standout player like Son, for example, or anything like that. Like it was just like the whole team as a whole, as a unit, fucking playing your style and then you know getting results. The other one that comes to mind too is uh, France losing the opener to Senegal in two thousand two in that World Cup. Remember mm-hmm. France coming off? They were titles title holders. <laughs> And then they make the run. They still made, they made a pretty decent run. It wasn't like, you know, what they did in 98, but still, still right? Like an opening an opening L that shocks them. To team. Senegal, like, okay, which cool. back then, Senegal, I think it was like the first time they ever qualified to the World Cup. So Yeah, African teams were not prominent in the late 2000s. Like they, no, yeah. they, definitely they, not. I mean, there, was, there were players from Africa that were prominent, but there weren't like right. nations that were like, yeah. you know, uh, consecutive, you know, big tournaments. They were, they were making inroads out of the group stage into knockout rounds. Like you just didn't see it a ton. The only Same team- thing from Asia- no, for sure. No, a hundred percent. The only the only team that I can think of was kind of relevant was Nigeria from like ninety six to like two thousand six because 
they had that run where they made it to the Olympics final against Argentina, actually, in 2000 or 1996 in Atlanta. My parents were at that game, actually. Um, but that Nigerian team was young. They were hungry, and they had a couple standout players. They had JJ Okocha, which was he was nasty. Um, Kanu, a legend, for, a legend. Kanu, who played for uh, for Arsenal. JJ Okocha, so good. They named him twice. Um, so <laughs> they they had a good fucking team. But to your point, like it wasn't like the teams now where like all the dudes play in Europe and you know everybody knows them. You know, like a Senegal team with even without Mane, like you know Ghana, you know, you know. Egypt, even though they didn't make it, but like Morocco, all the guys playing yeah. Europe. So, and I will say, even for the African teams that you know, I wasn't impressed by in qualifying or or what they've sure. done leading up to this. I think of Cameroon. Yeah, like Cameroon. The fact they tied Serbia is, I know, to me, an upset. To me, that's yeah. an upset, because especially because they were down three one. Like they were in shambles. Yeah, yeah. they were like, before man. the tournament. They, they were in shambles, yeah. and the whole Andre Onana shit. Did you guys? Hear I know, about that? I did hear about it. it he crazy. got sent home. What happened? The keeper got sent home. Um, due to quote unquote disciplinary issues, where he just disagreed in a very firm way with the head coach about mm-hmm. something. They didn't they didn't elaborate and say what it was. They didn't say where the competition went. But apparently, he wasn't just staying. He wasn't staying in line with like certain disciplinary procedures of the team, and they packed his shit up and <laughs> sent him home immediately. Um, so oh. he like he was flying home yesterday. Um, As they were playing, wild. <laughs> Yeah. As they were playing, and, and he, like, t- today he released, like, a statement about, yeah. you know, um, kind of, like, how he's 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 not he's not that guy that's just going against the nation. Like, he always puts the nation first, and, you know, it kind of is what it is. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, a, a very prominent keeper has a tremendous CV and background, uh, plays for one of the biggest clubs in the world, and just is probably one of the most skilled players, even as a keeper on that team, yeah. and getting sent home. Just fucking crazy. Um, but nonetheless, right? Like they're, they, they pulled it off against Serbia, who, which I, I get, we talked about Serbia on this, on this pod and how we felt like it was either them or Switzerland to go in there with Brazil. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Upsets have been a thing for the world cup forever. Um, it is the most unpredictable tournament. Anybody who comes into any given world cup saying that, oh, this team is definitely going to win mm. it, or these teams are definitely get out of the group. You just haven't been around for you enough of ball. them. Man. Yeah, you haven't been around for enough of them. Yeah, it's it's uh it, it's always a shit show in the best way possible. It's like um, uh, it's like the NCAA it's not tournament. All doom and gloom. You know, it's like the NCAA tournament. Yeah, March Madness is a thing because yeah. the potential for upsets, man. It's yep. like never you know. know. What, what, what's that prize ESPN rolls out every fucking million. year? Because million nobody bucks. can never guess the bracket. Million bucks million? for for a perfect bracket. Yeah, never gonna happen. We need one of those for the World Cup, bro. How did they not do that? I know. Well, it's tough because know, it's group stage. Not, maybe anybody picked up a perfect bracket. Yeah, it's tough because then you got to pick like the the right teams that get out of the group. Who gets out in first and second? Then the whole like bracket shapes mm. up, and then you go single elimination. So that's why I'm excited for our own thing that we're doing for goals. Right? Like we're doing our own little bracket. Um, I started off. I started off well in that. I'm getting. I'm. I'm me too. I'm I, I got too romantic behind. at the end of it, bro. I'm getting. <laughs> I'm falling behind. Yeah, I, I. I picked some teams to be the Cinderella team that I just. I, I had too much faith in. But well, and Uruguay the, was the biggest fucking disappointment. Yeah, far. they let you down, bro. Uh, but I do think the round of sixteen is going to be fun because now we'll know who goes through. We'll know the matchups. We'll know who's who on each, you know, or who's on which side of the bracket. So that'll be fun. Yeah, time to redeem sure. yourself. And when. <laughs> time to 100% redeem ourselves. Um, now, with that said, guys, I, I mentioned before, you know, we talk about World Cups, nostalgia, the moments yep. we've seen throughout the years. Um, I think what's been at the forefront of every one of these World Cup upsets have been individual players, you know, mm-hmm. players that almost seem like they're bigger than the country themselves, right? Um, and the easy one to, to lay up because Andre and I are Mexican and because the guy, sh- the guy is... It's like he doesn't even like do anything for four years, right? <laughs> yeah. Like he doesn't do anything. He may train a little bit, like he stays in enough shape. And then Mexico calls him up and he's just ready. He's fucking locked in, doesn't care who he's playing. Mm-hmm. It could be Neymar, Messi, Cristiano, anybody. And he's ready to show up and own all of the headlines. Of course, I'm talking about Guillermo Ochoa, aka San Memo. With, with like like that's the first person I automatically think of when we think of these standout players throughout the years. Mm-hmm. So far, can we say the 2022 World Cup, he has been the the standout MVP across his country and team? Like, is that the the one guy that, I mean, for Mexico, yes, he's the, he's the standout yeah. player. But when you think about all the teams, is there any other one standout player that's Ooh. matched up to how he's kept Mexico into this so far? Like, damn, 
Can any questions. other country kind of tip their hat to one player in the same way? Like somebody who just put, like think about it, on their back. Right? Like what? Yeah, Mop. bro. Think of like like dude. As recently as like 2014. You remember remember Hamas? Oh yeah, for sure. The, 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 the yeah, pre Real Madrid, yeah. right? Like like I don't think I don't think Fernando per- Perez even knew that guy fucking existed. I, I don't or or Kaylor. I don't Dennis. think anyone like, did. That World Cup. Or yeah. I don't think anyone did. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like, like Hamas. Like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, like, Florentino, he's just lighting it up. Florentino yeah. like Costa Rica. Is that is that a country? What, what? <laughs> no, man. I get geography. Is that, is that an island? Is that a, is that a territory? <laughs> is that an island? Um, <laughs> oh, but then dude. you see it, right? Then they had these standout performances. And, like, yeah. Memo Ochoa has been doing this for years. You think about the Brazil-Mexico game yeah. in the last World Cup, right? Yeah. And the guy in 2018, he was just – he was a wall, a brick wall. You couldn't put anything past him. Mm. In this World Cup, you, I think I cut you off a little bit, Andre. Is there no. somebody that you think that's had that kind of impact for their country so far? I mean, I'm going to go the easy route just because they've won both their games and say Mbappe because you don't have Karim Benzema and you don't have like that stack, like stacked midfield of like Pogba and Kante. So there are a lot of unknowns. But I will say, though, it's an easy – like. Well, duh, like obviously Mbappe is going to fucking like score goals and, you know, be on the, on the score sheet at the end of the day. So I don't think he's like a guy that puts the team on its back and like grabs the ball in midfield and, you know, scores a goal. But I do think that he is performing to the expectations and maybe above average of what I expected out of him so far in the World Cup. I think he, Interesting. I think this World Cup, he could like just boom. Like I know that he, everybody's like talking about him as like, you know, top five, top three players in the world. But I do think that in the previous World Cup, he only scored, what, one goal, two goals against France, and maybe the one in the final against Croatia. So, like... Yeah. I mean, he did have a... He had standout knockout stages in the last tournament. Yeah, um, for sure. But I think that this year is his year. I think Bappe is going to fucking light it up. But, bro, that's a layup. I know. Um, that's why I said I mean, that. and Bappe, he should. He should. Just, yeah. Okay, but someone, what about someone like Enid Valencia from Ecuador? Ooh. It sucks though because he just got knocked out. Yeah, we we just watched him go out to Senegal, but like, yeah, like I, I yeah, think yeah. like he he literally was like he scored yeah. the opening two the, the, the two goals against Qatar. Yeah, um, he scored one against the Netherlands to kind of keep them in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, you know, I think he was having a pretty decent game. I, I don't know. Yeah, um, Inter Valencia. I think Ecuador Ecuador as a whole though against Senegal, we, we just watched the game. I mean, he's. His team just didn't like they were. I don't know what the hell they did. I don't know if they had slept on the wrong side of the bed in the hotel. Yeah. I don't know if they didn't have their fucking Wheaties this morning, but <laughs> their defense was in shambles, bro. Yeah. Like it, it, it did not look good. First half was 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 terrible. I mean, Valencia can only do so much. He can't go back there and play center back for them. Mm. You know, um, I, I don't know. I think someone like him comes to mind. Someone like Gakpo from Netherlands, who has literally scored just about every goal for them Ooh, so yeah. far, He's comes good. to mind. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Alina. Is there anybody in in the twenty twenty two tournament this year that's like had that kind of impact for you? Yeah, my man Theo Hernandez. <laughs> oh he shit! Came on Another for French the injured. player. What's up with you guys in France, player? I think that's his brother too. got an AC- I, I'm pr- I'm yeah. pretty sure his brother got an ACL injury, so it wasn't like yeah, you know, like a shirt, usual whatever everyday injury. It's a literal ACL. He came on. He got the assist, and I read a, a stat the other day about. How he's the only he's he's been the French player with the most like uh, contributions, like goal contributions um, since Zidane. So I don't know. I don't know oh, about Mbappe. Shit. I don't know about Giroud. I don't know about Benzema. Theo is That's lighting crazy. it up, and Theo is going to be the reason why France are going to go as far as at least the semifinal. And he was on the bench, so imagine. Things Why didn't he start over his brother? I don't understand. Great question. I, I think because Theo is amazing, like going forward. I I think his brother is like more of a defensive one. Um. Mm. So I I think yeah, that's he's probably like a why. Center back. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably why. And also, Rabiot has been has been killing it too for France. So yeah, um, Rabiot has been killing it. Giroud, my and my other goat, who I I didn't see. I I think Giroud has a lot more responsibility than anyone else on that France team. Because he's stepping in for, for, for Benzema at probably yeah. he's you know, the last World Cup that he's going to play. And he equaled yeah. Henry's um, yeah. record for, for most goals. So that's, that's always Which is stuff. a mind-blowing stat. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because people – you know what? It's crazy. I feel like because – maybe it's maybe it's my circle of friends. Who knows? But I, like, <laughs> I, I read on the internet all the time, right? Like Giroud's like, oh, he's not that good. He has no pace. He, you know, this and that. I'm like – 
doesn't matter how you score the goal. Does it matter how you yeah. score? It could be your head every single time. Does it yeah. matter? Like, I don't understand. Just just because you can't use him in FIFA doesn't mean that, <laughs> you know, he's, oh, he's shit. I, I, I don't, I don't want to see him play. You know, there's so many players that are, that are, that are above him. I'm like, really? Because I think every club he goes to, whether it's Arsenal, Chelsea, Milan, back at his Montpellier days, like the guy scores goals. That's all he knows how to do, whether it's yeah. his head, his his foot, what anything in between. Back heel. He scores. He always He's finds a way. He's a complete striker. Yeah. He's complete. He's yeah, yeah. Thierry Henry's goal. That's crazy. Goal dude. record for France. Let That's that shit sink in. Wild the, Henry. The legend. I mean, the, the guy is class, a legend through and through. And and Giroud is keeping up with that tally. I mean, it's that's fucking it's wild. Fucking sick. Man. Um, Giroud's probably the best name I heard there, to be honest. Um, on that phrase, <laughs> what do you think that includes? Ah, uh, it's tough, right? I'll, I'll I'll probably go with one of the names I mentioned before. I, I I don't know, man. To me, like it was crazy to see Enter Valencia, thirty four years old, whatever he is, like lining it up, putting a, a nation like Ecuador on his back and just scoring goals. I think that was. Yeah. At one point, he was the leading goal scorer in the tournament prior to the the final match day of the groups coming in. So um, um, he was like he, he, and he was like joint top scorer, and he should have had four if you think about it. That Qatar goal, that the first goal of the tournament. Oh, that header. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He should have had yeah. a hat-trick that game. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it was, I think right it was for, offside like that one. Yeah, when yeah. they showed it, it was. There's been a lot of like pretty close calls, like that Lautaro against Saudi Arabia. Like his shoulders in front, yeah. but his foot is behind. Like what? <laughs> the fuck is that rule I don't yeah get it i don't know man i mean I, I, like the, the, there have been some pretty interesting standouts now do, like, for this year but does this compare to what we've seen in previous years i think memo mm. Choa has like this this you know this line of, of previous tournaments where we've seen him yeah. just go time and time again. on people yeah. Yeah. um but we mentioned hamas before that that was really yeah. only the 2014 world cup right we haven't seen him feature for colombia in a big major tournament since. maybe couple america 2018 he did but Maybe it, a Copa America here and impactful. there. No. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like how far Colombia won in the Copa America in 2016, like the like, Centenario one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That was here in the U.S.? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they might have made it to like semis, probably. Because they had a good team. I mean, after t- 2014, it, 2014, you still had Falcao in his prime. You, you had him. Um, like you had Donaldson yeah, Sanchez but, was it, stepping up. Like, I don't know. But he wasn't getting those headlines like he gets. Like he got that year. I mean, think of someone like yeah, that's fair. Do you remember like Forlan in '06? Yeah, yeah. Or oh, Forlan's a good one too. Forlan's a good one too. Yeah. Nobody was expecting um, Forlan to light it up in 2010. You know, so he completely took over that tournament too. Like yeah. it would have went to this one, the semifinals that year. And, yeah, uh, did they get third he place. Won, yeah, and then he won uh, the Golden Boot for the most goals in that tournament. That's wild, bro. Fucking that's sick. Wild. Dude. Wait, um, no, you were talking yeah, about Podolski. Is that who you're talking yeah. about? 2006. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I forgot about his him. coming. Because, his coming out party. His yeah, because Schweinsteiger was kind of the main guy at the time, and they. And then I you mean, had Phil, Balak Phil too. Yeah, and Michael Balak too, and then all of a sudden this mm-hmm. Podolski guy. That that's what you're right. It was his coming out party where it was like, who the fuck is this Polish guy playing for Germany? Because he was born in Poland, and people are like, oh shit, mm-hmm. like that's fucking crazy. And then before you know, I thought it, Germany were gonna win. Up. We're gonna win that tournament. They should. I, I think they should have. They're playing um, at home, and they were the hosts too. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing at home, but then you lose to a fucking stacked out Italy team. <laughs> that game, I actually watched on FIFA Plus. They have like you know throwbacks to go back and watch the full game. I watched that maybe like yeah. a month ago. I forgot to tell you guys, but I was like, I don't know what to watch. Like I'll I'll watch an old game, and I went back and watched the Italy Germany game from 2006 when Del Piero scored that goal, and then Fabio Grosso hit that inside outer. Dude, it was fucking yeah. wild. I couldn't believe it. Like <laughs> Germany at home, all you had to do is just beat the fucking Italians and go to the final. Oh man! Wait, who who hit that? Was, it was Grosso, right? Yeah, Grosso, Fabio yeah. Grosso, yeah. Grosso hit that like lefty. That's another one. That's I know. Another one. Grosso. I know. He and he, he dude. He, Fabio Grosso scored the last penalty kick against France in the final. Yeah, so. and yeah, everyone remembers him running off in the tears and like everything that came. <laughs> I was like, dude, like I I remember that shit like it was yesterday. Um, but mm-hmm. then like what what happened to Grosso? Great question. Well, because going into the World Cup, I think he like literally played for like Palermo or something. So like one of yeah. the, like the lower teams, and yeah. I think he did get himself a transfer to Juve after that World Cup. But after that, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one and done. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fuck it. Oh wait, well that, that's what that's what it does though, right? You look, Hamas yeah. in 2014 after that tournament going to Real Madrid. Podolski got picked up by Arsenal um, soon yeah. after yeah, that whole 2006 World Cup. Yeah, um, Grosso going to Juve. I mean, like, like I remember, 
Yeah, I, I remember like <laughs> in a bad way. Um, I was gonna say Harry Maguire. Um, oh, God. <laughs> did Harry Maguire get picked up after his is is a uh, he, he was already at United when he when he had the Euro run, right? Yeah, because he was at, he got picked up after Leicester won the the Natty. After Leicester won the EPL is when he became prominent because it was him and uh, who the fuck was, was he already brother? with England back then? No, no, no. I don't think he was even called up. Like he was just like a nobody. Maguire and the captain, Jamaican guy. Fuck, I can't remember. Anyway, so it was a two center backs. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah, was like very about. experienced center back, like older, kind of like a Vincent Company type. You know, where he was just like mm-hmm. leader of men and like his last hurrah, hurrah, and they won the fucking EPL. But Harry Maguire was like the young up and coming, like you know what John Stones is now. Um, but this was what six years ago, and now of course we know what happened. But yeah, he was. He was known back then. It's not like the Euros propelled Maguire to like be more prominent. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I wasn't yeah. sure if we could include him in this list or not because you know it's fair. He. I'll. I'll be fair to Maguire. He has had, actually had some pretty standout tournaments. Yeah. In, in this. In this tournament, in the 2022 World Cup, he's been. Okay. I mean, how many times have England got scored on? Right. How many times have they got scored on? Uh, that's a good question. Two. Two against Iran, and that's it. Two. Yeah, but yeah, but well, one of them was a wrong. fault, and the other one was just like a fucking fluke yeah. goal. It was a penalty kick. It was who who committed the foul on that one? You remember the Iran? It was yeah. like four two to make I, it. And honestly, bro, I, I probably I probably stopped watching towards the end of it. I think yeah. it was like it was our yeah. the game was, was already four one. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, but no, you're right. He hasn't been um, as bad as I thought. Like against the U.S., he looked solid. Yeah, he was the English man of the match for for them that game. Yeah, yeah. So I know like South, been... that Southgate's boy, man. Like, like, like in the last Euros and in the last World Cup in 2018, he has been a mainstay rider right the national team. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. Sure. I don't think it's the same in the sense that you know he was um, he was discovered at a major tournament, right? It's not like Andre Arshavin, probably the perfect another a perfect example. Mm. Um, the Russian, right, who was picked up by Arsenal immediately following um, was it the 08 Euros? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was 08 or yeah, 2012. Yeah, no, because that's it when might Russia. Have been 2012. No, uh, it might have been 2012 because that's when Holland and Russia had that run when the Netherlands were fucking stacked that year because it was right after the World Cup when they lost and they yeah. were like, this is going to be their re- redeem tour with Schneider and all the like Madrid guys, like Huntelaar, and Robin Schneider, and all those guys. Yeah. Van der Vaart was nasty, by the way. One of my favorite players of all time. Van der Vaart was fucking filthy. But yeah, they, were, they had yeah, Robin and all those guys. And in and, and that tournament, is when Arshavin came to to light. Be, I remember that because that's when mm. Vela from Mexico went to Arsenal, and he he and Arshavin were playing like the I was Carabao Cup. I was games so proud, whatever, bro. But, I was so fucking proud when Vela moved. Do to you Arsenal. have a Vela like, Arsenal finally. jersey? <laughs> I used to back in the day. Yeah, I mean, like I got rid of it a long time ago. There's no way in hell it fits me now. But like <laughs> back in the day, that's how long ago it was to have like yeah. some kind of Mexican representation playing for one of your favorite clubs. Well, it was like that and Chicha going to United was like. Well, well like and revolutionary in our family. For you, like you had Vela playing for Arsenal, but then you also had Rafa Marquez being a standout at Barca. So at the same time, at Barca, you had yeah, two, and yeah. Giovanni, he's, a, he's he's an anomaly, bro. Like, oh, like, I know, no, I know. Too, Gio came up like in that academy, so like he was yeah. like you know he was the next role were counting on him. Yeah, yeah. the next Dino, like, yeah. like he was already like widely touted. But like, how yeah. often do you discover? I, I mentioned Chicha, right? Like he got right was yeah. the 2010 World Cup that against South, South Africa well. in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did well, and then yeah. started, you know, started, he started, you know, called him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. so I don't know, man. Like these, I, I, I'm really, I, I'm kind of keeping an eye on player individual talents that are making headlines for themselves at this tournament because yeah. while Guillermo Ochoa is too fucking old to like moving on to like sure. a, a, another, everyone just appreciates his greatness. I don't think that everyone's anyone's scoping him out for a transfer. No, no. But but I think that you know we look at guys like some of the names that we've already mentioned. Um, and some pretty big headliners there as well. Like, is Dale going to stick around with Milan, right? Um, I mean, Jude. Is, is Jude going to stay with with? Yeah. I think people are knocking on the door. Yeah. Like, Jude, mm. Jude Bellingham will not be uh, in, in Germany by the summer. I think... Is, Ga- uh, is Gakpo going to stick around with Netherlands? Right. Which he shouldn't be, right? What, what like, about Rafael also? Leal? Rafael Leal has been pretty solid for Portugal, too. So, Milan's so fucked if yeah. it can't keep its young stars. Like, if it can't keep them... Yeah. Uh, I don't well, know and then happens. their their attack is Giroud and Leao, and they're both like fucking standouts of this World Cup. So, <laughs> to be fair, and, like yeah, if man. PSG come too. knocking 
with like 200 million for layout, yeah. like you have to you have to let him go and just read him first. I think Real Madrid should go after him because Madrid will nine. get him, I think. I, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. Ben here. I think I, I think they'll get him, but you guys will spend an arm and a leg to get him. Um, we always do. And then Maldini, Maldini will take that money and then like just yeah, reinvest into the squad. Hopefully they can yeah. find some backfills, but they have so much good youthful talent that they you do. just I will I want to see what this I want to see Milan of old almost like you know, remember 05 to 07? Yeah. Holy shit. Well, like, look, Kaka. Seydorf, Kaka, Gattuso, <clears throat> yeah. you know, even Shevchenko. Like, Inzaghi was still playing. Were... Inzaghi was still. Inzaghi. Oh, dude, Inzaghi. Like, uh, Crespo, Baldi. dude. Cafu, Cafu was there. Cafu, Cafu yes. Adida. Adida, the keeper. Nesta, yeah. Melody. Dude, that team was, yeah. that team was fucking so stacked. That, that Holy shit. Serie A, Serie A <laughs> used to be, like, cream of the crop. Like, yeah. like that's where you found players. Like, you, you, you know, Premier League was there, and it was, it was, because it's England, it was still widely touted. But, like, Serie A, at, at every level of, of club football was, like, yeah. I mean, I would everything. say through like 2011 when Inter won the Champions League against Bayern in 2010. I would say those yeah. are probably yeah. Mourinho, Mourinho's last run there was probably yeah. like the last very big prominent team to come out of Serie A. For Serie A, outside Man, of like an, end of an era, end of an era outside of Juve, like pushing for the finals, right? Like when they made it to the Real, against Real Madrid in 2017. Like I get that, but it doesn't it doesn't feel the same. You're right. Like the the 20, I would say like early 2000s to like 2010, 2011, Serie A was. The fucking best league, I would argue. Yeah, but well, it didn't. Th- those years, so like <clears throat> they went to the they went to final twice in three years. Juve, yeah, but it was just Juve, yeah. right? Like there wasn't right. any other. That's what I'm saying. It was just one team. So like, yeah, yeah, because they lost to Barca in 2015, and yeah. then they got knocked out like in the semifinals the next year, and then like the, the that that year they went to the final again, and I was like, okay, it should happen this time. This is their year. Real Madrid, and other, other plans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's it's, the problem. Like they, they face like a, a Barca team that was probably like the best in all of Barca's history. Yeah, that's with, true. Like, you know, and Real Madrid, and thing. then you're playing against like Bale, Ronaldo, Benzema. Like there's no hope. <laughs> I know. I know. Just... It was MSN one year. How do you stop MSN? And then like a, a couple can't. years later, yeah. it's like BBC. How do you stop them? And it's yep. like, yeah, you can't. Fuck, man, we're never gonna get like a normal team to play against. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but anyway, a lot of standouts throughout this this tournament's history. It's been so fun to watch. I think the knockouts will actually give us a lot more to talk about in future episodes. But on that note, we're getting close to kind of wrapping up here. What I want to dive into really quick before we, we do wrap up is we have we, we just concluded Group A stage games um, in terms of the final matches for the group. We have um, Group B also set to conclude today. Um, USA, Iran. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some, you know how we see that group planning out along with every other major group. Kind of go around the horn really quick kind of pick our two teams that we see moving on. Uh, and maybe that'll give us, you know, kind of a, a layup for what's to come in the knockout round. We won't dive into the entire bracket today, uh, but just focusing on who we expect to advance and how those scenarios will pan out. So group, well, let's, again, group B, let's let's talk about the matches that are coming here in less than an hour. Um, Iran, USA, do we expect that match to go... To be a surprise. I mean, do we expect it to go in the... And a surprise, from my perspective, would be Iran winning it. Do we expect that to happen today? I really hope Either that. Either one of you. Um, I, think, I think the U.S. need this. They need this. They need this. They need this. Especially considering that... I, th- I believe the U.S. have the youngest team in the whole... All of world, the, the World Cup. Like, the the age average. Um, yeah. And correct very me young if I'm team. wrong, but I believe no, they yeah. do. You're and right. then also considering that... In the in 2026, the USA will host some of the World Cup games, so it's yeah. even more important for them because if this if this game goes well, that opens up room for a lot more like American football fans. That it's gonna mm-hmm. like lead the whole nation, you know, like as a whole as like just like the love of the sports here in the in the states. It's it's gonna increase leading into that World Cup, and then hopefully we'll just we'll be a football loving nation by 2026, you know, I, I think that'd be huge. So damn, they have you to. should be precedent. They have, that was to. a pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I'll vote for you. I, for can't. President. I don't think I can. Cause I wasn't born in the U S. Oh, you weren't born here. Yeah. You're yeah, like I me. Would, I, you're like no, me. Okay, fine. I would, I would definitely enforce some football senator. related laws though. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, I love so it. the two teams you have going through, are we just going to, is it easy to say England and us? For me, is yeah. that the layup here? Yeah. Andre? I think. <laughs> Put your bias aside, bro. I can see it. I can see it in your eyes. Put your bias aside and let your ball knowledge lead you. 
U.S. should win this game. Here's the thing. I don't think Iran is going to win it. But I do see Iran fighting for a tie. And that's pretty much it. That's all they fucking need. That's the one thing that yeah. people haven't talked about. People have talked about USA, win and you're in. Like, that's a very, like, American mentality to think about sports. Like, it's like playing an NFL game, right? Like, it's single elimination, win and you're in. Game seven of the World Series, win and you're in. Like, that type of shit, that type of mentality, I get it. But you can't disrespect Iran, dude. Like, they beat Wales for a reason. You know, they did look yeah. kind of pedestrian against Now, they, they, they did it in stoppage time, both goals. Fair. But- yeah, that, they did. I mean, it was like can 10 t- minutes of stoppage time. And you can say that, like, Wales, that's on them, right? Like, that's not Iran winning. That's Wales losing the fucking game. But yeah. I, I think when everything's on the line, for especially for a super tight group the way that it is right now, I could see them fighting for a tie. The U.S. should go through. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, England is going to probably beat Wales, right? Unless some crazy shit happens where Wales fucking beat them and now we're stuck in like a four 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 like type of situation type of scenario so um so there is yeah. still a chance for wales to go through i think they, goal differential has to be if they goal beat england in goal differential then we'll have to play a role i think um because iran has what four points now because they, they won then the u.s mm-hmm. have the one point right or they have two because they tied both they have two england yeah and, two and draws wales. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then so it depends on what happens with the U.S. But like, basically, yeah, if yeah. Wales were to win by a good margin, like that's three a zero, yeah, 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 yeah like it's a good basically margin that, yeah, that's fair. Then it'd be like a three-way uh, tie at the top. tie for yeah. second, and it comes down to goal differential. Yeah, so I it's a really tight. Like, that. it would be funny. That'd be wild if they beat. So if, consensus, even if they just beat England, England. go ahead, England, England, U.S., England, U.S. <sighs> yes, with an asterisk. For me. All right, um, England, US. That's how, that's how I have it too. We'll move on. I'm not going to do score predictions because I'm already nervous about this game. All right, we'll move on. Um, groups, Group C. I'm also nervous about this group. Well, less nervous because Mexico has already shot my hopes in the fucking foot, man. Like it's yeah, it's tough because now in, in Mexico's f- favor, and I will I will stick up for them tooth and nail. They're they're putting out the same output that a team like Uruguay is, and Uruguay has infinitely more firepower That's right. than than Mexico does. Yep. Um, so in my opinion, with the team that they have, this is kind of kind of ex- expected, somewhat <laughs> expected. But they still yeah. have it. They still have a chance. They're not eliminated yet. They still have a chance. So mm-hmm. matches that are, that are coming up, right? Um, to kind of close things out, Poland versus Argentina, um, Saudi Arabia versus Mexico. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't we're not doing score predictions. Just nope. simply the two teams you see getting out. Um, and I'll start this time just to kind of flip it really quick. Fine. Um, yeah. I see. I think I think it's going to be mass chaos, and I think Saudi Arabia is going to find a way to to, to nick their way in, and oh. I think it's going to be Argentina Saudi Arabia. Wow! Man. For, for a second, what about you guys, Melina? Man, I I want Poland first, Mexico second. That's what I want. I oh, love that, that's who I had too. That's what that's what I had too. Yeah, I have a feeling that Poland. I, I want to see that so bad. Beat Argentina. I think Levin's then... gonna show up, bro. Dude, I think so. I think they're gonna play defensively. I think it's gonna be a one goal differential. And yeah, they're just gonna get a goal. He's gonna I... turn Otamendi and just fucking finish it. Hell yeah! Go, go, I, I'm not. I'm alive. Corner, I love watching Levin play, bro. It's it's so hard for me not to like cheer for him. I just here's the thing for me it's not even about mexico being in the group like to your point you already said everything that needed to be said like we underperformed whatever but like kind of to be expected tough to beat saudi arabia they, they've they shown that they kind of belong in this tournament they you know they haven't gone down swinging or they're going down swinging if they do um but it would be so fucking poetic if argentina don't go through just for like all the people talking shit and being like Messi's gonna win it, like it's gonna be easy path to the final, all the shit, bro. How funny would it be if Poland go through and then Mexico? Oh, because here's the thing: when you start looking at goal differentials and how tight the group is, all we need is Poland to beat Argentina, and then all we need is to beat Saudi Arabia one zero. It's a very realistic yeah. possibility. It's not like we have to, you know, beat Saudi Arabia four zero. That that would only be the case if Argentina wins. If Argentina beats Poland yeah. single-handedly, yeah. then th- according to their goal differential is how we stack up. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I have Poland I think, and uh, Mexico going through. Yeah. And just to put a bow on this, we'll move on. I, I think um, – I, I don't think it's like everyone thinks that Argentina had an easy group. It's just that of every team in this group, yeah. no one has a better chance to win it than them. 
Yeah. Like nobody, that, that's nobody, fair. Mexico and Poland can make it through. And we can conclusively say that, that that's it. That the mission accomplished. They, they may not, they probably not even go past round of 16. If they get to the quarterfinals of W yeah. like, like that, that's it. As far as those teams get, Argentina has a real shot to win it. And of, of course I, I'm actually rooting for a Messi Ronaldo final. If that's possible, That'd be fucking amazing. That would be. It sick. would break the internet, and that's really what I'm what, what I'm what I'm rooting for. Because again, my two teams, USA and Mexico, I don't really see either one of them winning it either. So, yeah, for you sure. know, I'm just trying to to, to keep that dream alive. Um, Group D, for uh, this this one's super straightforward, I think. Um, France, Denmark, are those two teams that we have? Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. 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 Pretty okay, much. Cool. <laughs> that, that one, <laughs> I don't want to dive into any more than we have to. Um, Group E. Really fucking interesting, especially considering that oh. Costa Rica upset. And I will call it an upset Japan. over Japan, that yeah. one nil. Um, but is it is it as straightforward as saying now Japan and Spain, or or, or after what Germany mm. nicking that equalizer at the very end against Spain? Do they have a the, a very slim shot? Is there a, a slim chance for them? I think Japan's going. I mean, they're be going to beat Costa Rica. I know. I think Japan's going to be another. Um, Japan's going to be another Ecuador. Where they had like a fucking great first game, then not so great, yeah. losing to Costa Rica, and then in the third final like group stage matchup, they're gonna shit the bed. And I think Spain and Germany do go through. It sucks. It really does because I that goal is gonna change everything. That like you know the yeah. Germany goal in the eighty third minute or whatever it was to tie it Spain. That's gonna throw the the group into a loop. And what sucks is that Japan's gonna know that they all they had to do was fucking tie Costa Rica to have you know more hope in this final matchup. The fact that they lost, that was kind of their. They needed him, and they, they needed a point. Because now a point. you're not gonna fucking beat Spain. Like, <laughs> there's no way in hell. And how do you how do you beat Germany and not get a Spain? I know. Uh, not a, a point off against Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Makes that's, no sense. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that's the shit that like Japan lost their privilege to advance <laughs> because of that. <sighs> and dude, so. I was so romantic about Japan as, as soon as they Me got too, that result against. Uh, dude, I had them going oh, through. Man, I told sucks. you, I've I've I had them and Spain going through. <laughs> so I believe, man. Maybe so? there's a way. Maybe maybe Costa Rica does it twice. Maybe they shock the world and get a point on oh. Germany. Who knows? Dude, ah, that would be, that'd be insane. Chaos. I don't I don't know. I I, I don't know. It, it would throw the entire World Cup up for grabs, but I, know. I like but, to believe that maybe Costa Rica can do something with this very old team. Alina, what do you think about that group? Man, I I mean it's hard it's for me because I Germany. like Japan, but my dad is a Germany fan. I, I would I love to see Japan go through. Me too. Um I, I I guess like my hope is on Costa Rica, but like after what they their their the first game lot was six nil seven nil like I'm seven just, seven yeah that was crazy I think that's um yeah, that's they got the biggest result so far in the World Cup yeah I don't know man I don't know yeah Spain's I, goal I'm, differential is <laughs> taken care of like it's solid like, <laughs> I'm really anyway. really mm-hmm. really disappointed that Japan lost against Costa Rica because for me that was the deciding game on who goes through. And yep. now yeah. I I I pretty much think it's going to be um, Spain first, Germany second. Yeah, the powerhouses. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's, I love I love seeing upsets, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. Um, Group F. Um, Canada has sealed their fate. They are officially eliminated. Um, Morocco not going quietly. They are very much in this shit. And the I, I, I'll tell you what, based off what I've seen already. I just hope Belgium doesn't make it through. They don't deserve to be there. They don't. I mean, there's so much drama going on yeah. in that locker room, apparently. Yeah. Um, you know, players just have zero trust with each other. There's all that that quality on the field, and no one gives a shit. You hear De Bruyne doing interviews saying they're not going to win the World yeah. Cup. If you're not going to win it, what's the point of <laughs> yeah. being there? Yeah. I mean, uh, leave then. Like, I, I don't yeah. know, man. Just the mentality is not there. I'm hoping they don't go through. I would love to see Morocco and Croatia go through. Um, I think that because Morocco is playing a defeated Canada – there's a real opportunity for that. Now, Canada could, could come up and just want to get some pride and leave with pride. But at least win one I still game, think right? Morocco. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Morocco will show up. So that, that leaves Belgium, Croatia being the very key result yeah. for both teams. Do you think um, – what's what, what are the two teams? No predictions on the score lines for any one of those games, but the two teams you see going through based on those. Hmm. Yeah, a good question. I don't know. I, I'm kind of with you, Jose, because I, I don't, I, I don't want to see Belgium go through either. Like, no, the whole self with what, what, like, is De Bruyne their captain or is he not? No, he's captain? second. He's second captain. I think Hazard is the captain. He, he's second captain. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like he is the most like prominent Belgium player, though. And for him to to come out and say yeah. shit like that, it 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 doesn't help. And you know, there's no. something wrong. So. 
I if if they somehow I I want them to go through just because I do think that they would be the more exciting team to watch in case like you know for the run of 16 and the knockouts I think they'll be more interesting to see than like if Morocco go through um or Croatia Croatia go through so what I'm I don't know I I still want them to go through and then I want Croatia to go through as well okay yeah I think we're all we're on the same page dude I think I had Belgium and Canada at the beginning I really did think Canada was going to show up and they did to a a certain extent like they it's they i think they played better than what people expected them to they just didn't get the results and i think it's experience mm-hmm. right being in a tournament like that playing against two big european teams is fucking tough like it's if they started against morocco could have been a completely different story right like you win the first game against morocco then you maybe you tie belgium and then you beat croatia or something i don't know so they just got fucked playing belgium first but um i think belgium after what De Bruyne said, after just how lackluster they've looked, after even looking at Roberto Martinez's like body language on the sideline, right? Like I was a coach for four years, and granted, it's not the same level, but like you can tell, like body language tells you a lot about players and coaches. And like this dude yeah. is just does not feel the same way as they felt four years ago. And I think De Bruyne, that's the one point that I will take from that interview is he said, "There's no way we're gonna win it. We should have won it in 2018. That was our time." So I, I think yeah. everybody knows. Like right now, it's just like let's put together. a decent enough performance on the field to get results, but like we're not going to put the pressure that we did on us four years ago to win the whole thing, which is fucked because you have that much talent. Like to me, that seems extremely the number two team in the world wasteful and, and you're yeah, let's go back to rankings. You're number two. So uh, they don't think I don't, they don't deserve it. But again, anything in soccer, you can't talk about who, who deserved to win. You know, I, I do think that it would be awesome if Morocco go through, that would be fucking sick. Yeah. Another yeah, I, I, African I, I country. Agree. So. Yeah, um, group group G. Uh, we know Brazil's going through. Um, yep. It's just a matter of at this point, I really do think it comes down to the match between Serbia and Switzerland. Yep. Um, I predicted Switzerland to go through. You both predicted Serbia to go through. Yep. Are we still in line with those predictions? Yep. I think Serbia is going to beat Switzerland. The way they played against Elena? Cameroon, um, taking mm-hmm. away those two goals. No, I don't know. For me, I'm I'm a little nervous about Serbia because. Initially, like my initial prediction was that Serbia was going to do well in the World Cup, um, relatively mm-hmm. well and go far, but not with a very injured Vlahovic and a not fully fit Kostic. Mm-hmm. Um, so that like, they've they've like I think Kostic pretty much like missed the whole opening game. Um, I think Vlahovic yeah. got subbed on, but he didn't he didn't do anything. He's been like battling with this injury, and then I believe he didn't play the second game. Uh, no, Lava didn't play the second game at all. No, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I believe. I, don't think I believe in be Mitrovic. Fully fit. Yeah, I do. I believe in you Mitrovic the, in, the, in, the, in the tank, and I yeah. believe in my boy Sergey Milinkovic Savic. Oh man! To lead them all the teams are like lining up for that guy. <laughs> who's got newfound dad strength? He just became a dad. Uh, yeah. So nice. yeah, awesome. like, like I heard, like right, right he, he apparently he found out like right before the tournament started. I should send him awesome. a gift. Congrats to him. Yeah, <laughs> just my boy. Um, love him. At I think that the game is going to be spicy as hell. There, and for those who don't know, what's kind of crazy is that there's a couple players on the Switzerland team who have Bulgarian heritage. Um, yeah, Shakiri, uh, Granit Xhaka, and what's crazy if you, if you know the the history of those countries, Bulgaria and Serbia, they as people they actually fucking hate each other. Like they, <laughs> they they don't agree on anything. Um, I can't wait to see that match. Now, uh, Group H, the final group. Um, we already know Portugal's going through. They are facing Korea. There is still points to be had. And Korea wants uh, – is Korea won is going into that game without their coach. Paulo Bento was red carded um, against um, Uruguay uh, mm-hmm. in, in their game. Oh, no, what was it? No, it was South against Korea. Ghana. Was it against Ghana? Wait, which one are you talking about? No, but but it was against it, it was against Ghana, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, red card. The, one, the one that just happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that just happened. Cause, because cause did he, you see what he, happened? He ended it. Yeah. yeah, but bro, he gave them like an extra minute and a half. I know. That's like, why I'm like, he, bitch. It was, don't complain. What are you complaining about? He gave you extra time he, you to know, get there. I don't know. Yeah. The, the game yeah. was over. The game was over. Um, and 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 the guy is just too animated to begin with. He had way too many cups of coffee before that fucking game. <laughs> um, so Portugal's playing Korea. Uruguay plays Ghana. I think Uruguay is done, in my opinion. I just don't see enough firepower from them. But it, I don't know. That could just be me. Who is going through with Portugal? Oof. Korea, Ghana, or Uruguay? Damn, that's a good question, dude. 
Uruguay has looked I so want Korea pedestrian. Personally. <laughs> yeah, I want I want them too. I I really do. I, I again because I don't think Japan's gonna go out. I, I it was either one, right? Japan or Korea. Now that the yeah. that Uruguay is underperforming this much with that much talent that they have, I think Korea would be fucking sick. Korea and Portugal would be dope, in my opinion. And then you'd see yeah. Korea Brazil in round of sixteen, and maybe Korea can pull oh. another two thousand two. That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> It would be crazy. Brazil right now, Ghana's really in second, by the way. So just so yeah, you guys know. know. What's up? Uh, it's, uh, Ghana's in second place with three yeah. points, and the other two Ooh. have a tie uh, each. So yeah. one point apiece. So, yeah. so, I mean, Korea really needs to beat Portugal yeah. to get through. And um, same Ghana thing just needs for to tie, right? They would, need to, they would need to beat Ghana. If, if they draw Ghana, Ghana goes through. Yeah, that's true. So I guess everything is pointing towards Ghana. I could see Korea just saying, fuck it. Like, they beat Germany four years ago in the last group stage match so i could see them being like you know what if you, don't, if you don't go boss to the wall portugal maybe resting some players because they're already through that's a good recipe for maybe a yeah, team that 100%. really wants it they'll, they'll probably put some they'll like, probably put some, some young, young talent in yeah um, to get experience to mm-hmm. not get you know, cristiano's we'll, not gonna start probably i mean he might but he might play like 45 minutes oh, so Ronaldo. that's a good nothing that's a like good him fucking, like not even getting the goal no, did you see oh, that the so federation like, like this morning? I woke up to tweets about the federation saying that they're gonna fucking request FIFA to change it, like officially to give Ronaldo the goal. Yeah. Apparently, there's this fucking picture of no, like microscopic crazy. evidence that his hair moved when the ball touched his head. Like the fucking man. I love him. Oh, Still wearing the jersey. You're wearing yeah, the jersey. I was gonna say that's, that's a little heavy-handed <laughs> as, as you're wearing saying. the seven. But like, <laughs> still repping. Yeah. But come day, on, man. What's I just what's more important, the stat or the fucking win? Like I I don't know, man. I I guess, for Portugal or Ronaldo, because it's a different answer for. That's for what I'm saying. But to Ronaldo, like, what should be more important, the, the oh, win yeah, sure. or the fact that you got one of the goals? Like, Dude, I just can we talk I, about? I don't see Bruno getting you know <laughs> putting that out there. Can we talk about the Portugal Ghana game when the keeper last play of the game puts the ball? Down? Oh yeah, when he almost he almost <laughs> turned it. Yeah, that was that was like fucking wild, man. That game to this day is still the the best game that the tournament has has offered. Yeah, I, I, so I, I love that game. It was fucking wild. It was back and forth. Was crazy. Yeah, uh, it was good. really open. Like that, yeah. that's what I expect to see in the knockout rounds. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna get that. Well, look, we, we've been rambling on from an hour 15. Guys, this is a great show. I um, had a great time. Pretty soon, I'm going to tease this a little bit. Pretty soon, I think either the next episode or the next recording after that, probably before the World Cup ends, we're going to do um, a World Cup draw, an all, all-time World Cup draw where we spin countries um, randomly, select nations, and we can't select the same player. Um, mm. It's going to be really, a really fun game for all of us to play, kind of flex our knowledge on – you know, players and teams from from past World Cups that we really grew fond of. Uh, but it, it'll be a lot of fun just because, you know, I love building all-time 11s and seeing the likes of Busquets and Maradona on the same on the, on the same type of, of team or or Messi and Cruyff on the same type of team. All of that mm-hmm. stuff sounds like oh. it's going to be a lot of fun. So we have a lot of really cool games, a lot of topics coming, all revolving around the World Cup. Super excited for those. But as for today... We got to get out of here. USA match is about to start. About Let's go. Minutes. Good luck, guys. Good I luck. get more coffee in me. I, I appreciate it. I'm oh, super man. pumped for this game. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but again, Andre, Alina, thank you both so much for, for being on the show. Uh, we'll hopefully have a guest as part of our final World Cup episodes that's also coming. We'll keep that under wraps for now. But in, until then, guys, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you feel like our predictions for the next round of 16 are horribly stupid and off. Let us know. We definitely want to know. Um, But until then, we'll see you guys for the next time. I appreciate it.